So India's electric vehicle sector has already seen, you know, phenomenal growth over the last couple of years. If you ask me, last year we sold almost like sixty thousand passenger vehicles, which are electric to electric passenger vehicles. We sold almost more than seven lakh twenty or thousand electric two wheelers. Uh, we sold, uh, you know, uh, I would say almost close to forty forty five thousand electric three wheelers. You know, by the end of fiscal twenty three. And if you look at the EV penetration, of course, in passenger vehicles it is about 1.5, 1.6%. In case of two wheelers, it was about 4.5%, if I'm not wrong. And in case of electric three wheelers, it was in the range of about 5%. But what was very important is if you look at the total cost of ownership, you know, for owning an electric vehicle versus an ICE vehicle. In case of passenger vehicles, since the cost of you know the electric passenger vehicle is higher. To the extent of 40 to 80 percent of you know the erstwhile ICE vehicle, the customer will take some time to migrate because his running is limited. You know, maybe about 8,000 to 10,000 kilometers a year for a personal user. For a commercial user, it definitely makes sense. Plus, you have CNG as an option. So, from that perspective, currently total cost of ownership viability for a passenger vehicle owner will only come you know at the range of about 17, 18,000 kilometers of running a year. But if he is wanting to own this for a larger period of time, say eight years, ten years, and is largely looking at city application, then it definitely makes sense. And we are seeing a lot of people wanting to buy e-passenger vehicles in that regard. In case of two wheelers, if we see the total cost of ownership is anyways favorable even today. You know, with a three-year or a four-year holding period also, with a running of about eight thousand or nine thousand kilometers, even after considering the revised fame that has come in. So from that perspective, you know this segment is poised to grow at a much faster pace. And in case of three wheelers, again, what is important is it is largely commercial, you know, kind of movement. So the running is really high, north of 100 kilometers a day. So in a month, you know, generally you will see the user running for at least two and a half thousand kilometers. So which means you know through the year he will run for more than thirty thousand kilometers. So from that perspective, our sense at Crystal is that you know by 2030. We will at least see almost like one fifth of the passenger vehicle industry move to BEVs. That is almost like twenty odd percent, if I have to say so. We have a range from seventeen to twenty three percent, if I have to put it. In case of two wheelers, we feel almost more than thirty percent of two wheelers sold will be electric. We feel it's going to be a range of thirty to forty percent, where scooters will achieve maximum electrification. In case of three wheelers, we expect this to be in the range of sixty to eighty percent. Going forward, so from that perspective, you know, electrification is going to happen at a much faster pace. Even buses, we feel electrification will be to the extent of 20 to 25 percent, largely because of the push that the government of India is having to greenify public transport. So basically, if you look at the basic, you know, kind of uh, thing like cells, mm. cells are currently being imported. You are right. You know, we take it from either from uh, Samsung, Panasonic, CAT, LG Chem. There are various suppliers from whom we import, but that does not mean it will not get localized. We already have a production-linked incentive scheme for advanced chemistry cell, basis which you know there are a couple of companies who have already been qualified for that. Now we will actually see those companies manufacturing in India. Of course, you know when you look at the basic raw material that you need, you may still need to import a few of them. But you know you will see cells being localized in India very soon. You know over the next couple of years. and once we start building scale we will also see the prices coming down for that matter now what is important is the other parts of the ecosystem bms we are already seeing a lot of two wheeler manufacturers who have localized the bms here in india in, even a few three wheeler manufacturers are doing so that that is something you know which will not be a challenge considering the software prowess that india has you know built over a period of time we are if i i may not shy away from seeing that we are probably the software capital of the world everybody looks to india from a software perspective so from that perspective i think th those are skills that we don't lack third you know with respect to electric motor controller we are seeing a lot of localization which is already happening in india a lot of global majors also wanting to set up shop in india and you know kind of operate in india in fact even for a few other components like connectors etc also we are seeing a lot of players getting very very aggressive in india and wanting to set up shop here in india and you know kind of scale at a very big pace so from that perspective i think the component industry is gearing in i think there is one major difference that i am seeing as compared to what it was in the last decade that is earlier the component companies were looking more inside out which means whatever the oem or whatever the you know ecosystem would need in india 
he would develop products accordingly today they are looking far more outside in which means they are looking at the world as their market so they are developing bases what is happening globally and then they are ready so once those transitions happen in india they are in a position to supply so see toppling china is a different story because you know the scale china has built is phenomenal over the last 25 years mm -hmm. india will take time to come up to scale but there are two or three things that have happened you know over the last couple of years mm -hmm. if you see because of some environmental regulations certain processes like casting forging etc are you know kind of uh, have have strengthened in india significantly so we have become the factory of the world for casting and uh, you know kind of forging products apart from china and slowly gradually we are seeing that a lot of european or north american companies are wanting to source from india if you go and talk to any casting or forging manufacturer and you ask him the number of rfps that he has got you know in the last 3 years or 4 years it's mind boggling that was not the case earlier why we have scale we have competitiveness and we also give quality so from that perspective if you ask me we are looking at this pace to grow at a very rapid pace which is already happening second you know if you ask me as you said ever since covid struck all oems globally are wanting to diversify their supply chain so they are you know kind of moving away from a single supplier source to multiple supplier source so if you look at opportunities outside china which are the other countries which will provide you that opportunities i think you know for that you will need to have a market which itself is large enough for the component manufacturer to make an investment to sustain india offers that kind of market potential because the domestic market itself is so huge that taking that into consideration the component guys can invest scale up in india and also can look at the global markets so from that perspective we see a lot of oems outside are looking at india very seriously and slowly gradually we'll see india building scale and a lot of you know kind of components you talk about cells or you even talk about things like semiconductors wherein we are already starting to see some kind of investments coming in of course you know if i have to say in very layman terms delhi abhi bahut dur hai because you know we are still taking baby steps in that direction but nothing would stop us from achieving the scale that china has achieved maybe over the next 2 to 3 decades one i would say that uh, you know policies do not have to be knee jerk uh, there needs to be a long term policy road map which is extremely crucial for any industry to you know kind of grow even today when we talk about fame uh there is no clarity as to what is going to happen to fame post march 2024 so you know oems are making investments but if there is clarity provided to them i think you know the investment can be far more uh, you know uh, uh uh i would say uh, at an enhanced pace as compared to what it is happening now because many a times it then becomes half hearted so you know if you have long term policy clarity you will be in a position to invest high you know in the economy which will create jobs which will create localization which will also create scale help in bringing down cost so from that perspective i think you know long term policy is extremely critical second customer education or awareness is very very critical today you see there are various options available in the market in the in form of i so there is cng there is petrol there is diesel you know people also run on, run their three wheelers on lpg in a few you know kind of markets so from that perspective what is important from a customer perspective and which fuel suits him is something that needs to be educated you know from a customer perspective now who is going to do that oems component manufacturers as well as various stakeholders that are linked to the industry need to create this awareness and educate people at large so this is also something you know which is very very important and extremely critical also you know there are there is a lot of negativity stating that you know at the end of the day we are going to burn coal to produce power and hence evs are not sustainable now this is something that needs to be propagated by the government or relevant stakeholders at large stating that this is something that will not happen in a day we are building capacities or capabilities on the renewable side slowly gradually we will see x percentage of our power coming from renewable 10 years down the line which means out of the overall supply mix or the grid mix that we have so much power will be drawn from renewable energy which is non polluting hence if you look from well to wheel concept perspective also you know we will be net zero or we will be closer to zero emission 
so from that perspective if you don't provide this education or this awareness to people at large they will only read what is there in newspapers and you know many a times quite a lot of them are misleading and you know they will formulate opinions based on that